afternoon and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Mara Triangle in Kenya. We have a lioness in the bottom left of the screen. She is busy stalking a very young, sort of five, six month old young wildebeest. We found this pride, it is the Awino pride. And we found them on the side of the road with what seems to be an adult wildebeest kill. And it's possible that this youngster is coming back to try to find out where her mum might be. The adult lioness that you can see, you can't really see anymore. But she's hidden from view. She's moved in very quickly, seeing the, seeing the individual is on its own. Watch out, folks. Look at that. She's moving in. P please feel free to throw any comments or questions below. I'm not going to take our eyes off the action for now. This is incredible. We've just arrived in the scene. I saw this young wildebeest coming in from the left, completely oblivious. It's probably too young to really think about the threats happening right now. And as the whole objective of the wildebeest being born the way they are is to be able to run as fast as the adults pretty much from birth. Within minutes, 10 minutes or so, they're able to move. Here we go. Watch it. Oh, my word. Look at that. That is extreme speed. Now, is another lioness in wait on the other side here? I'm not sure. Yes, on the road. On the road. Here she comes. Oh, she's too quick. You're running towards the other lions. Oh, they're in the right position. And does that answer your question about the speed? That wildebeest is absolutely motoring. That was incredible. My heart is in my mouth. Well done, young wildebeest. Shoo! <laughs> Take a deep breath there. <laughs> and as I hope that answers your question about the speed of a wildebeest. It, I think that lioness was a little bit too cocky there. Could have maybe given it another moment. Surely your words were heard. The wildebeest heard you saying, go baby, go. But unfortunately, the, the young male, that one there, who burst out of the scene right at the end was really not well placed. <laughs> he didn't do too much, did he? The two adults, though, well, they're going to spend some time catching their breath. But it just goes to show, folks, I mean, right up there where that male is, somewhere in the grass, we haven't even seen it, but there's an adult wildebeest by the size of the horns I saw just briefly, which means that the five of them have fed on an entire wildebeest and she's still willing to hunt because that opportunity of a young wildebeest coming into sort of their scene was just way too much to give up. Well, well done. Thank you for joining us all, folks. This was a remarkable little stint. <laughs> well. There is Hosanna now. Don't worry, there is no problem, of course, with the camera. We are taking out the Fleer T1K once more. And there is Hosanna in glorious thermal image. And you can see that he's found the perfect place to lie. I say that because clearly you can see that the sand around him is much cooler than his body. So although it's been quite a hot day, he's found himself a nice cool spot to lie in. And in fact, his breathing has become slightly deeper and less frequent than it was a little earlier. So clearly he's settling in for a lengthy sleep. I think we're going to stay with him. I don't think we're going to leave him because we have to do, well, we have a, a TV rehearsal a little bit later on today and we need to have him with us. And also he's in a very thick block. So if he does get up and move, we'd probably lose him. So let's have a, a nice chat about Hosanna and the coming months of his life. There you can see him lying in the cooling dirt. I had a wonderful experience when I was on leave in the Kruger National Park with my parents. Uh, we were apparently camping. Well, we'd hired a camper van, so it was kind of quite glamorous camping in theory. Anyway, that's another story in itself, twice as funny as the one I'm going to tell you now. But I, uh, one morning we were sitting cooking breakfast. I was waiting for some water to boil, because they give you water, boiling water at these little breakfast stops. And there were squirrels running around. It was very, very hot. It was much hotter than it is now. They were charging about the place. And every so often, every two or three minutes, they'd stop dead. All, of the, all three of them, it was three of them chasing each other, and lie down 
on the it was a sort of paved area and they'd just lie down flat they'd push their legs out in front of them and their back legs out the back and they'd lie down and push their bellies onto the cool ground uh, to cool down and then as soon as they'd cooled down sufficiently they'd start running around again and that's exactly what young Hassan is doing now he's cooling his body on the sand Indeed, we do. So another herd that is milling about, it's been an elephant kind of frenzy of late and so it's really nice to kind of spend time, like I say, with them. So another kind of grouping that came from Gallego Pan, it seems as though all of them went there for water during the course of today and then they've all spread out and looked like when we went past the pan there that there was tracks for at least two or three different herds kind of coming in this direction as well as then the herd that we saw earlier not too far on the western side of the pan. So lots of activity there and it's because even though we did get a bit of rain this weekend and last weekend it still really hasn't been rain to speak of that has filled up any little pans or water points and so the really the only water at the moment on the whole of the Juma area is Gallego Pan and Weertela Pan so there's really nothing else I suppose a little bit at Buffalo's Hook but the water here is so much fresher that it's the worth the extra sort of half an hour walk for these ellies to go down and get into that area around that dam than it is or well, the pans than it is to go to Buffalo's Hook Dam itself So cats own as a bull is not rare at all in fact it's very common for bulls to go off on their own a female uh, quite uncommon it's very seldom that you'll ever see a female elephant on by herself generally if she splits off a herd it's normally because she's splitting off with her family grouping which is normally two or three of her own calves so you know it's very 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 seldom that you would see a little elephant on its own as a female I mean if you find a baby elephant on its own well then you know that there's something majorly wrong and that in all likelihood her mother is no longer around and her mother has been killed by something or has died but it's it's very 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 uncommon to see you know baby elephants by themselves or even um, adult females kind of walking on their own I certainly have never seen it you sometimes see them kind of just a little bit off the grouping but you'll find the group not too far away and they will join up it's not something that happens quite regularly i wonder if maybe in other areas maybe where low density of elephant or maybe sections where you, i don't know you might find it in other parts of of africa but I, I definitely have never seen it and never really read anything on females distributing um without their family groups i don't think it happens at all you know there's such a tight-knit bound sort of community amongst an elephant herd and they are so attached to the sort of bonds that I would find it very surprising that the females would want to distribute. I mean it's quite a traumatic thing for the young boys when they get pushed out. Unfortunately they really have to kind of you know think about being they, they get a little bit depressed in many respects you can see them kind of moping about and they'll often try and latch on to any herds that come past in those first few years and they often get chased and, and then you know sometimes even latch on to the big bulls and that's where they'll kind of learn what goes on and so if you go up into the northern parts of Kruger where you tend to see a lot more bull elephants big guys particularly you'll find a lot of youngsters that join in with them and will try and kind of follow them around and they basically learn the ropes of being a big adult male so very seldom to see to see females but males it happens all the time um, you know they get left on their own quite regularly unfortunately for them fortunately for the the kind of genetics of elephants but unfortunately for them So Tingana, for some reason, that today is being the most cooperative leopard ever. He's being like his son, in that we've both times gone looking for him, and both times he's just popped out right next to us. So Senzo spotted him across the boundary on Biffle's Hook, and he's just walking straight at us, and of course is now kind of scent marking in the most beautiful afternoon light. Isn't that magical? Very cool. So it's been a rather easy kind of afternoon with our leopards today, with Hosanna very... Well, good afternoon to you too, Tingana. That's very out of the blue at this time of the day. Okay, well, he's evidently got a lot to say. It's because the impalas have been shouting at him, I think, that he's just making sure. This is the area that he was mating within the last few days, and so maybe that's why he's just making a bit of a noise, just telling everybody he's still the dominant male here. Hopefully we're not going to lose signal. We are going into this little dip very close to Gauri Cutline, and sometimes we get a few issues. It's been okay in Jigger lately, so I'm hoping that if we just stay a little bit higher. But let's see if we just 
this end and hopefully he walks and then I'm going to let him go quite far until I'll eventually try to catch him on the other side of the hill we should be okay but he's just going to the toilets of course when one soars then it's just time to kind of that extra bit of energy maybe is forcing him to now go to the toilet and get rid of whatever there was inside his tummy I'm pretty sure that he's going to head towards Buffelshook Dam I think that's where he's gonna head Marcy I don't know in the condition that he's in right now for a while still he's looking really good he's big he's strong he's patrolling he's calling and no one seems to really want to challenge him too much I mean he's an intimidating figure is Dingana he is not a small boy by any stretch of the imagination and certainly Hukumuri even though he's got that fierceness to him and that kind of gaze he definitely does not match Dingana in size stakes so you know at, at this stage for a while still I would imagine you know a, a lot longer but you as you saw with the beginning of the year, things can happen to these cats out of nowhere and they can lose condition very quickly. And I think if that happens to Tingana once again, I highly, 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 highly doubt that he would be able to kind of hold on and there'd be too much pressure and you know the likes of Hosanna, Hukumuri, um, Mumfukazi, this unknown male, all of them are going to be around these areas pushing and who knows what other young males are creeping around in these kind of sections that could arrive here at any day. So for now, I mean, looking good looking strong probably easily could do another kind of year which would be nice and he needs to if he's going to have just mated with the female and father cubs he's going to need to do that for a while longer to keep those cubs safe but let's see i mean you never really can tell but he looks good enough to to still be the duke for some time to come right he's cutting off the road so i'm going to try and kind of just keep up with him we're going to go through here i do apologize if we get a little break up but stick with us it won't be too bad also Going to hold on two seconds. We're going to do this even better than what we've got right now because we can actually get this is the furthest I've ever driven into Bilfazuk Dam. We're kind of right in the water itself now, which is there we go. Look at that, isn't that spectacular? Beautiful coloration on the actual water itself. It's about as good as it gets, if you ask me. How nice is that? Beautiful colors on the water as well. There's a bit of kind of almost golden sort of reflections coming off the water itself and then Tingana that's sort of looking just kind of past us at the moment. A beautiful, beautiful light and it's just we really lucky that we've got where we are where we are because we kind of got this little island that goes into Bilfels Hook Dam at the moment and that allows us to get sort of right in to the dam itself and so we've got a more kind of head on sort of view of him than we would have had otherwise. And hopefully he's going to turn and face us again. Mrs. Lapwing, you want to know what's calling in the background? Well, it's your namesake, is a Lapwing that's calling in the background, a blacksmith Lapwing that's making that ticking, ticking sound. Um, there's also, it was a three-banded plover that called just now too. So, a few different birds that are calling, but the most, or well, the loudest one is by far that blacksmith Lapwing that you're hearing. Indeed, Kaya, and there are a lot of bugs on the water surface. It's um, that time of the year where we will start to see things like mosquitoes and various mayflies that will start to come out um, and hatch off the water surface. And so those all those little circles that you're seeing is most definitely little bugs that are coming off. Right, now while Tingana drinks, it sounds like Steve has got a very cool sighting of the lioness up in the Mara who are shouting about the fact that it is their territory. The Awino Pride is in full chorus. They have moved off from their wildebeest and they are moving into the wilderness back to where the other one lioness was and now closer inspection one of the young females is with her as well. So here comes the young female who is very sort of what's the word affectionately named as Papaya. She's got flat tops on the ears. There she goes. And the young male will be following her very soon. The adult by the name of Lychee, who's the pale white of the two adults, started a call, was answered by her sibling, 
and by the others. The others didn't make too much of a noise, but it's always awesome to be in amongst lions when they're calling. A little bit of love. Hello, girls. Okay, well, here are the Awino Pride all getting back together and getting up and mobile. And in the meantime, while the love continues, let's go back down to Tingana, who is quenching his thirst. Well, he's now finished quenching his thirst. He's now going to uh, probably just walk along the edge of the bank, which is typical of a leopard when they are kind of finished drinking. So I'm pretty sure he's going to find himself a little spot now just to rest. But isn't that beautiful? Kind of him just on the edge of the water point is absolutely kind of a picture, to be honest. It's really very very pretty way to kind of spend the afternoon and I was hoping he was going to head here now the best thing that could happen is if he decides to go up onto one of these banks with this late afternoon sunshine oh no you're going to lie down there boy it would have been nice if he just gone onto the bank because there was a nice little bit of gold orange coloration on the bank itself which would have perfectly kind of matched his coat but he is posing as the duke that he is and regal as possible, I would imagine, on that bank. Have you got hiccups from drinking too fast, Tingana? Looks like it. Well, Matt, if you have a look, maybe if Senzo comes back, you might notice that I'm right in the middle of the dam. So where I'm parked is right in the middle. This is water here, and there's water on my behind me as well. So there's warm water over there. So uh, theoretically, this should be I should be underwater completely if this was in the wet season. So where we've kind of found ourselves is right <laughs> into the middle of this particular water point. It's the first time I've actually ever driven on this particular section, and it only has this island has only just formed recently. It's kind of dried like this and so you know we haven't really had this um, sort of island formation in quite some time the last time it was dry like this was in 2016 when it was completely dry and you could drive all over the place inside Buffalo Dam but look there he goes there's that golden light that I was talking about unfortunately he is going to cross past some vehicles now so we probably will lose sight of him for just a little bit and we'll have to reposition ourselves um, and try and kind of find a different spot I'm hoping there's a little bank that he likes to sit on that I'm hoping he is going to go to right now my seat has even moved in the kind of chaos of trying to get into the sighting and get where I needed to go and so while I kind of reposition myself and get myself sorted out let's send you back across to Steve who's still following his lions as they carry on into the night here they go up and mobile the Owino pride led by the two adults They were doing some scent marking, urine scraping, urine spraying. They've called, they've shown their presence on the landscape. And bearing in mind, folks, the Awino Pride is one of the smallest prides we have around at the moment with only two adults. A breakaway from, I believe, the Sausage Tree Pride. And they need to secure a territory, an area for themselves. And they've got a very nice one here between the Olololos and the sausage trees and the paradise that side and there's so many I'm trying to get my head around them and oh hello she's busy doing a little bit of urine spraying right over my shoulder here you can actually hear the grass going it's something very characteristic that lion and hyena do when they urinate like that scraping the ground uh, there's a pedal gland in foot of most animals and there's a gland in between the toes that actually they're giving off a scent as well and it's very common in lion leopard as well as in hyena so it's not just the urine being sprayed it is also the kicking up of the dirt and it has rained so it is important to demarcate these again so that no rival pride will just move through Hello cats, you want to know how pride is formed? Well, let's try to keep up with them before we lose them in the light. But uh, how they are formed basically is um, one lioness, could be a lioness from anywhere really. Uh, it needs to obviously start off with a lioness. Um, and she could just head off into the wilderness and have some cubs by meeting a male. Males are well accepted. Uh, males that dominate an area generally have sort of quite sort of prey rich water accessible areas females will move into that area and then she'll establish a pride and it starts off simply by just her having some cubs and then once the if she has um, say three four cubs then normally 50% of them are male 50% are female um, it's a debate on how many of them will survive uh, but if she can get two 
one or two females to survive they will stay within the pride so these two youngsters in the pride will stay uh, the males after a period of time will move off and they'll have to go somewhere else but males will come and go uh, with regards to the mating um, but females prefer dominant males within an area so that they can look after the cubs because there's no point in having cubs if they're going to constantly be killed so that is g the gist of it it is a little bit more technical than that but it starts off with one lion and her offspring and the females will stay in the pride throughout their life and there is some play going on up ahead yeah let's see if we can catch it maybe two of the youngsters just in the bush there genre just attacked each other I don't think we're gonna get it maybe we come around this way well Tingana is posing better than one could ever 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 possibly ask for he's up on this bank at Wiffelsook Dam with this blue sky behind him that is nothing short of absolutely spectacular it's it's a place that i've wanted to see him lie before i know that ali's once had a sighting of him up here i mean there was a whole bunch of buffalo at the dam but it's this kind of golden light with this blue sky and these puffy clouds in the background that just make this absolutely beautiful he's uh, does he not look like a king up there i think so i mean that's his most regal kind of position he could possibly have put himself in if you ask me he's kind of only thing he's done wrong is that so Laura is, is a king of the hill indeed the only thing is is he's lay the wrong way so if he had left his tummy kind of face us and his sort of head were facing us it would have been much better because he would have caught the last of that sunshine kind of facing towards us but you know beggars can't be choosers sometimes and so we still are having a kind of magical sort of sighting of him up on this particular piece of this sort of dam wall so I suppose it's a termite mound actually more than anything else and really is a spectacular spot for a leopard to sit it is, seems to be a place that he likes to lie I've tracked him over this before but have never actually physically seen him on it which is surprising I would have thought I would have seen him before now you can see his tongue is hanging out this is the hukumuri pose I don't know why he's got his tongue hanging out it's every now and then you'll find that um, leopards do sit like this why they do i'm not quite sure there seems to be no kind of consensus as to what the actual reason for it is but either way it is spectacular that he is sitting up there you can see even the clouds now are starting to get a bit of that golden sunshine as the last kind of rays are touching his coat look at that isn't that me well he certainly decided he was going to do some moving he got up and he started stalking something we didn't know what it was and then we came out into the He's still looking around though. He won't be desperate for food. He has eaten fairly recently. But leopards are of course the ultimate opportunists. Zephyr, you say that Tingana is the Duke of the Hill and uh, Hosanna is the Prince of the Road. Well, that could be true, I suppose. That would be one way of looking at it, certainly. There's the Kudu with its very sharp eyes looking down this way, seeing the terrifying spots of the young Prince Hosanna, who's now staring at us. Yes. Look at you. Pant with your mouth shut. You would not want those sharp canines anywhere near a piece of you. They are very, very sharp. See how he's flattened his ears now, as if that is in some way going to disguise him mm -hmm. from the kudu staring straight at him. Osana, are you joking? He looks almost slightly ashamed. They are, he's quite, I nearly said slight, he's not slight, but he's certainly got, uh, there's no fat on him at all. I mean, his belly is, is pretty lean. I mean, he's in prime condition. You can see the immense muscles on his shoulders there. 